Well, then I don't know if it's on or if I just want to get more out. I might have a trick on just a few more. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning.
morning and welcome to worship today on this Pentecost Sunday. May the Holy Spirit come, bless our worship together, bless our time together. May you feel the source of God in this room today. Um, a few things to talk about as we're preparing for worship today. Um, your newsletters are in the back of the sanctuary to pick up after church. Um, we have a um, few new pieces in our worship setting this week. Our Lamb of God is a new um, is a new tune. However, I think you'll recognize it. Um, our um, offering song is also a new tune, but it's an old English folk song. So I think you'll recognize it as soon as it gets started. Continue to submit hymn requests. Um, not this next Sunday, but the Sunday after. So the Sunday right after Trinity Sunday, we will be starting our hymn suggestions. So continue to put in your hymn suggestions. We're going to do at least one more round of um, suggested hymns for the course of the summer. There are green cards in your pew, or if you need more, I think there's some back of the sanctuary. Um, I believe that that is all that I have for today. Does anyone else have any announcements as we're getting started? Okay. Then I ask you to stand as we're able. We'll begin with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed it be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are happy to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, forgive us, and pity us so that we may have your will and walk in your grace to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, 
and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one had heard them speaking in their native tongue. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native languages? Parthians, Maids, Edomites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit among, upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above the signs of the earth below, blood, fire, and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Praise we'll read responsibly Psalm 104 and select the verses. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Wondrous sea, great and wide, with its swarms too many to deliver, living things so small and great. There go the ships to and fro, and Leviathan, which you made for the support of the sport of it. All I know to do is give it and that you please to see them. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You are not your face, you are terrified. When you take away your breath and your eye, you return to us. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. Make glory, O Lord, in your forever. O Lord, rejoice in all your works. You look at the earth, and it trembles. You touch the mountains, and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please God. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. The second reading is from Romans chapter 8. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we might also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and then we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip? You still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. In, if in my name you ask for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees nor hears him, it sees nor knows him. You know him because he abides in you, and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Dear beloved children of God, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We read today, when the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. So I'll say it. That would have been terrifying to me. If you've already had a chance to read our newsletter this month, you'll know that the term Holy Ghost was one that used to scare me quite a bit. Here we have another description of God's Spirit in the world that for me seems fairly frightening too. I've been fearful of windstorms most of my life. Almost exactly 38 years ago this weekend, it was June 7th and 8th of 1984, there was a storm that produced what's called a tornado outbreak in parts of the Midwest. Total, there were 46 tornadoes from that storm, including an F5 tornado that did a lot of damage in the area surrounding my hometown and more or less completely destroyed a nearby small town. Of this, I believe it was 18 businesses, 17 were destroyed. The storm itself, even without the tornadoes, was a violent storm. The Weather Service reported that the storm had produced about 300 lightning strikes a minute in some areas. With that in mind, I think you are probably understanding why I'm so fearful of windstorms. It's a challenge to ignore that pounding that my heart does during a severe thunderstorm. And I don't mind telling you that I'm really grateful for all the grip that surrounds me in the parsonage. It says, And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Really, God? Certainly you could have come up with a better way to show your spirit than a violent wind. What happened to descending like a dove the day of Jesus' baptism? Or the living water that Jesus promises to us as he spoke to the woman at the well? Or the Spirit of God hovering over the water at the story of creation? 
Instead, the Spirit of God shows up like the rush of a violent wind. I think this teaches an important lesson. This is, well, and all of us need to learn this lesson, but this is the passage that teaches it to me. And the lesson is that we don't get to decide how or when or in what form the Holy Spirit shows up. Yes, sometimes the Holy Spirit shows up as a dove descended from parting clouds, and sometimes the Holy Spirit shows up hovering over the water at the time of creation, and sometimes the Holy Spirit shows up as a burning bush or tongues of flame or a little tingle that goes down the middle of your back or when your, when your eyes fill with tears during a particularly moving hymn. Our hymn of the day today, Spirit of Gentleness, is a wonderful hymn, but the Spirit isn't always gentle. Because as we read here, sometimes the Holy Spirit shows up like a rush of violent wind, something that's powerful, something that's terrifying even, overwhelming and awe-inspiring. Now there will be people who tell you differently, but I am never going to be one of those people that tells you that something like that tornado in June of 1984 is God's doing or an act of the Holy Spirit to teach us a lesson. I don't believe that. It was tragic. But in looking back, that violent wind brought more than destruction. It brought a time of people coming together. Farmers whose barns went down milked their cows in their neighbor's barn. People opened their homes to their neighbors if their homes were too damaged to live in or were destroyed. The violent wind that came into that community and destroyed and broke things apart, and in the midst of that destruction, God showed up. God showed up by way of the Holy Spirit working in regular people. Thinking about the Holy Spirit in this way, as this thing that shows up in people after a violent wind like that, makes me wonder if sometimes we aren't catching all of the little glimpses of the Holy Spirit that might happen around us. I know that since windstorms are frightening and unsettling from my point of view, I can't, I, I usually don't expect God there. And where else am I not seeing God on account of the experience being powerful or terrifying or overwhelming or awe-inspiring? Just last week, I spoke about the challenges of having conversations with those we disagree with. Challenges in identifying how we can all be one, even when we disagree with one another. And admittedly, those conversations with people are difficult, even bordering on the sense of a conversation that's impossible. Sometimes it feels like that's tearing things apart and that it's chaos and things are being, and things are being destroyed. It's like those really difficult lessons, the ones that leave us feeling like everything is in chaos, or like that violent wind on that day of Pentecost. The violent wind that rushes in and threatens to destroy everything. But if we trust that God is there, amazing things sometimes happen. The violent lit wind was probably frightening and disturbing and overwhelming, even terrifying on that day of Pentecost. But it also amazed and astonished everyone. And it changed everything. It upended everything. Just like the Holy Spirit showed up that day and turned what we could have what could have been a moment of chaos and horror into amazement and awe, God works in our relationships with one another. The Holy Spirit can act in those difficult conversations or those contentious issues, and everything changes. I wonder what other things are like a violent rush of wind at first and eventually have the potential to be something else. To have a way for God's Spirit to rush in on the heels of that violent wind. 
Now, like our own synod, who is meeting for assembly later that week, we have synod assemblies happening all across the country this time of year. And another synod is in the midst of some very dreadful things going on. It's quite complicated, and I'm happy to explain it to you if you like after service or give me a call. But the short version that it involves racism, accusations of financial mismanagement, bullying, and just so many things, and accusations of formal things involving people who have a fair amount of authority. And to be blunt, it's a mess there right now. And while I've been praying for those who are hurting, because of these events, I've started to wonder, how is the Holy Spirit going to move in and act when the dust starts to clear and the people of God need to work together to fix things? Amid these overwhelming and terrifying situations, how will the Holy Spirit rush in and do something new? How will the Holy Spirit take what has been broken down and rebuild something better? How will the Holy Spirit, like the proverbial winds of change, sweep in and bring new life? How will the Holy Spirit enter the lives of those suffering in this process and in all the times when we experience fear and chaos and bring about a new reality? One where God feels closer, and one where we can behave in more Christ-like ways. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them a bit. It's difficult to see the Holy Spirit working when we find ourselves in the midst of that violent wind. But after the wind, the tongues of fire appear, and the Holy Spirit fills us. And the Holy Spirit acts to give us the ability to speak to those around us as children of God. Each of us given the ability to speak as the Spirit chooses. Sometimes the Holy Spirit shows up as a dove descending from heavens. Sometimes the Holy Spirit shows up in the running water as Jesus talks to the woman at the well. Sometimes the Holy Spirit shows up hovering over the earth in the story of creation. And sometimes the Holy Spirit shows up in rushing wind, in awe-inspiring and even frightening rushes of wind. The Holy Spirit shows up amidst our disagreements, our contentions, our challenging times, and our upheaval, and then gives us the gift of speaking as God's children. It recalls the messages from Prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women. In those days I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. We are the sons and daughters that will prophesy. We are the ones who the Holy Spirit is poured out on. We are to prophesy the message of God's love. We are to prophesy and share the gift of God's grace, that unearned forgiveness that all of us receive. We are called to crucify the crucified and risen Jesus. So prophesy, my dear beloved children of God. Speak the truth of God's Holy Spirit, weaving love into this world. Amen.
Christ and the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son of the Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Holy Living One, Holy Moving One, first open our locked doors, and by your Spirit drive us out into the world, proclaiming your mighty deeds. Direct our words and actions, trusting the Advocate abiding in and among us. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Feed and care for every creature, whether great or small, to contribute to the vibrancy of your creation. Train us to interact with creation from a place of wonder, awe, and reverence. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send to your spirit, send your spirit to places where language is a barrier to community. Bless the work of translators, interpreters, and teachers. Promote understanding for the sake of those longing for justice and peace. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort all who live in anxiety and any who are suffering in body, mind, or spirit. We pray especially for Rita, Carolyn, Linda, Nancy, Carolyn, Sue, Max, Mom, Yolanda, Bill, Glenda, Betty, Iris, John, Ron, Gary, and those we name either silently or aloud. Remind them that your spirit has made them your children and that they are never far from your glory. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide all leaders of your church. Be with those attending Indiana and Kentucky, Kentucky Senate Assembly and inspire their discussion and decision making to support and develop spirit led ministries. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gather your, gather your people across the regions, nations, and lands. Unite us through your spirit to bring us into understanding with one another. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send your spirit to all ministries in and around Hartford City. Let the gifts of your spirit flow into every congregation and every gathering of your people. Today we pray especially for the ministry and people of Three Trees Church. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, God, O oh God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving Spirit, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. I invite you to share the peace with one another. So, if you wish to give, you may do so at the back of the sanctuary. May God bless these gifts. We will continue with our offering song. Thank you. 
abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field, and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus,
were able. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. here at this church. She has now grown up. She, 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 was, she had her first communion here. She was confirmed here. She has grown up. And um, possibly to the chagrin of her parents, she is leaving home. <laughs> Even if temporarily um, uh, pursuing a degree at IU. So I'd like to both celebrate and honor her today and pray for her as she goes forward. So dear friends, Life presents us with various significant milestones that set the stage for the next phase in our earthly journey. Graduation from high school is one of those milestones, and today we'll honor Caitlin as she moves through this special time of accomplishment, transition, and change to ensure that we, her community of faith, stand with her and support her as fellow believers in Jesus Christ. This time of celebration and transition, I identified this part from scripture that I thought was fitting. It's from Proverbs 16, 9. The human mind plans the way, but the Lord directs the steps. Dear graduates, this is a special time in your life. We're eager to show you how delighted we are that we have reached this milestone in your life. As fellow members of the community of faith, we rejoice with you. I want you to know our pride and excitement as you move forward in this accomplishment into the next phase of your life. We also want you to know that wherever you go and whatever you do, we are going forward with our prayers of God's continued guidance and power, protection, and strength. 